Welcome back to also cybersecurity episodes with Cyber Queen. Today we're getting into all of the details of identity management within the Microsoft solution stack. Managing identities is not just about knowing who has access, it's about strategically controlling that access to protect and streamline your operations. In recent times, the perimeter has truly shifted. The identity has become the perimeter and securing the identity is critical. Hi, I'm Venetia, the founder of Cyber Queen, a cloud security architect and Microsoft MVP. Together with also, we bring you cybersecurity insights packed with the latest news and diverse perspectives. Don't forget to check out the Also Cloud Marketplace for more great insights. Now let's start with a basic introduction of Microsoft's identity management ecosystem. At the heart of Microsoft's identity, management offerings, we find a suite of sophisticated tools designed to secure and simplify access across the organization. Microsoft's Entra ID is at the forefront of identity management technology, focusing on securing and streamlining access across an organization's digital landscape. Entra ID elevates access security beyond traditional password systems by incorporating advanced identity verification methods these methods include biometrics, security tokens, and behavioral analytics to ensure that access is granted based on a dynamic understanding of who is requesting access, under what circumstances, and whether these requests align with established security policies. The goal here is to provide a secure, frictionless access experience that adapts to the risk profile of each access attempt, thereby minimizing potential exposure to identity-related security breaches. Now let's look at a practical example and use case for Entra ID. An SMB has transitioned to a hybrid work model with employees working both in the office and remotely. The company wants to secure seamless access to its systems without overloading its staff with complex security measures. In this case, with using Entra ID, the company implements a system where employees can access company resources through a combination of facial recognition for in-office staff and a mobile app that generates security tokens for remote workers. This setup ensures that access is granted based on real-time authentication of the user's identity, adapting to the context of each access request. So whether it's from the office or remotely, security is kept without affecting productivity. Next up, we're gonna look at access management. Now, access management in the Microsoft ecosystem introduces a complete framework for managing and securing access to resources across cloud and hybrid environments. It enables admins to craft detailed access policies that govern who can access what resource, from where and under which conditions. This is important for organizations looking to enforce least privileged access, a principle that ensures that users have only permissions needed for their roles, thus limiting the potential impact of a breach. Access management also includes capabilities for real-time monitoring and auditing, supplying visibility into access patterns and enabling rapid response to suspicious activities making it an indispensable tool for keeping a good security posture. Now, once again, let's look at a practical example of how we can use access management to protect sensitive data. A company stores sensitive financial data and wants to ensure that only specific roles within the finance department can access this information, preventing any unauthorized access from other departments. Now, in this case, by using access management capabilities in Azure, the company sets up role-based access controls, RBAC, that strictly defines who can access the financial data based on their job role. This is enforced through the assignment of roles in Entra ID with policies that 
automatically adjust access permissions as employees roles change or as they join or leave the company, ensuring that access rights are always up to date with the current organizational structure. Next up, we're going to look into conditional access policies. Conditional access offers the ability to dynamically adjust security requirements based on Context. It assesses each access request based on a number of factors, including user identity, device health, location, and the sensitivity of the resources that is being accessed. By setting specific policies that require added verification or that restrict access under certain conditions, organizations can enhance their security without hampering user productivity. For instance, a policy might allow access to sensitive financial records from devices that are compliant with the organization's security standards. Or it might require added authentication steps when access is tried from a new location. Now let's look at conditional access from a practical scenario perspective. So a company is concerned about the risk of data breaches through compromised credentials, especially when employees access company resources from unsecured public networks. Now the solution here is to use conditional access policies that require multi-factor authentication, MFA, when the system detects potential login attempts from unknown or unsecured networks. For known networks like the office network, the system might only require a password and then a security token. This approach customizes security requirements to the level of each access scenario. This in turn balances security with usability. Now, if we move along and we look at Microsoft's Identity Manager, this specializes in the management of digital identities across the organization, making sure that users have the access that they need and only that. It automates the process of creating, managing, and removing user accounts and access permissions in line with the lifecycle of each employee. This includes automating the provisioning of new accounts when someone joins or adjusting access rights as their roles may change and making sure that they are removed when they leave. Now, automating this step really helps with a few challenges. The potential of human error, it ensures compliance and helps with data protection from unintentional users. Next, let's take a deep dive into multi-factor authentication, MFA, for protecting access security. But first, let's recap the definition of MFA. MFA is a critical security measure that requires users to provide two or more forms of verification before getting access to resources. By combining something that the user knows, like a password, something that the user has, like a smartphone app or a security token, and something that the user is, like a fingerprint or facial recognition, MFA drastically reduces the likelihood of unauthorized access. So even if one of the factors like a password is compromised or stolen, the added verification requirements makes it much more difficult for attackers to breach accounts. MFA is especially important for protecting against phishing attacks, credential stuffing, and other common cyber threats, making it an absolute non-negotiable part of any modern security strategy. Now again, let's look at a practical use case for using MFA. You need to implement a security measure to protect against the increasing threat of phishing attacks that target employee credentials, knowing that passwords alone are no longer enough. And in this case, you will use MFA. When you implement MFA for all employees to access company resources, this multi-layered authentication approach will significantly reduce the chances of unauthorized access, as attackers would need to compromise multiple authentication factors in order to gain access. By using Intra-ID, Access Management, Conditional Access, Identity Manager, and MFA, you can create a secure, efficient environment that supports both operational agility and compliance with the best security practices. Now, in the next section, we're gonna dive a little bit into 
something called self-service, which is often overlooked when it comes to identity management. The role of self-service can be extremely enabling and is important by enabling users to manage certain aspects of their identities, like password resets, access requests, companies can reduce the overall IT workload and also enhance user satisfaction while still keeping tight security controls. So it absolutely is a win-win scenario that balances autonomy with security. Now let's look deeper into how self-service can be implemented effectively and securely. First up is self-service password reset. For short, SSPR. This enables users to change or reset their passwords through a secure automated process. This process typically involves identity verification steps like answering security questions, receiving a verification code via either email or SMS, or using an authentication app. Now you can set up SSPR by configuring either security questions, having a mobile phone and email verification methods. Users are then asked to register for SSPR when they first log in. When a user forgets their password, they can follow the SSPR process to reset their password securely without needing to contact IT at all. Next, we're gonna look at self-service access requests. Now, this allows users to request access to resources, applications, or groups directly through a portal. These requests are then routed to the right approvers who can approve or deny the request based on a certain set of policies. Now, this process ensures that users have access to the tools they need while keeping strict control over who is granted access to the sensitive resources. When we look at self-service group management, this allows users to create, manage and join groups without needing help from IT. And this is again based on basic policies. This is useful for collaborating on cross-functional projects and teams. It enables users to quickly form groups and share resources as needed. Now, while self-service features have very many benefits, they should be implemented with security and governance in mind. These include verification methods, approval workflows, audit trails, and user education. From a verification perspective, we want to ensure that the identity verification methods used in the self-service processes are secure and reliable. Multi-factor authentication should be a prerequisite for accessing self-service features. When we're looking at the approval workflows, there should absolutely be workflows in place for sensitive actions. These can include requests to access critical resources. This helps to keep oversight and prevent any unauthorized access. Audit trails are really important. You should be keeping detailed logs of sensitive self-service actions, including password resets, any access requests to check for suspicious activity, and audit trails to ensure we are following regulatory requirements. Finally, from a user education perspective, we need to ensure that users are educated on the importance of security practices related to self-service, like choosing strong security questions and protecting their own authentication methods. By carefully planning and implementing self-service capabilities in the identity management strategy, SMBs can achieve a balance between operational efficiency, user autonomy, and security. Now, let's take a look at the practicalities and the licensing options available for using IntraID. Very many people find it difficult to understand the IntraID licensing model, so I'm going to break it down. Choosing the right tier, whether it's free, P1, or P2, ensures access to the necessary features that support a balance from basic identity services to advanced security and compliance capabilities. Each tier is designed to meet different organizational needs, enabling SMBs to tailor their identity management strategy accordingly. Now, the free edition provides key identity and access management capabilities suitable for small businesses or just those starting with cloud services. Intra IDP1 expands on this with more sophisticated features like single sign-on, multi-factor authentication, 
and conditional access, which is aimed at businesses needing a bit more advanced security and management tools. And then Entra ID P2, of course, offers the most comprehensive security and identity management features, including advanced threat protection and identity governance, designed for more complex enterprises with complex security and compliance requirements. Now, in summary, we've navigated through the essentials of identity management in the SMB landscape, emphasizing the significance of self-service capabilities and the strategic choice of Microsoft Intra ID licensing tiers. This journey highlights the importance of marrying operational efficiency with strong security measures, empowering both users and organizations. By aligning business needs with the proper Microsoft Intra ID tier, SMBs can secure their digital environments, enhance user autonomy, and keep a competitive edge in today's dynamic marketplace. Next time, we will be covering the core identity management educational resources to really equip you to take this on with confidence. As always, you can find many more amazing resources in the Also Cloud Marketplace. Don't forget to check it out. Remember, in cybersecurity, staying informed and equipped is key to safeguarding your business. Thank you for watching and until next time, stay vigilant and stay secure.